MSU who has studied, lived and researched, developed, and environmental justice in Palestine since 1985. Please give it up for Stephen Gassier. Assalamu alaikum. It is, it is so amazing to see you all here. This is an, an amazingly large crowd. It touches my heart. Uh, I'm coming before you today as a member of the Peace and Justice Task Force of the, of the Edgewood United Church of Christ in East Lansing. We are proudly members of the National UCC Synod and the UCC Palestine Information Network, which was put together in 2005 to bring more information on Palestine from the work that the UCC has, is doing there to our membership. The UCC has a, strong, has a long history of presence in the Holy Land, walking with Palestinians and seeking justice in this land that is central to all people of Abrahamic faith. Increasingly concerned about the growing oppression of Palestinians, uh, especially over the last two decades, the UCC PIN just three years ago led, led a movement for the passage of a, of a resolution before the National UCC Synod entitled A Declaration um, on the Requirements for a Just Peace Between P Palestinians and Israelis. <laughs> this, this resolution articulated the principles, and I'm quoting from the resolution, the principles that must be in place and honored in any future in any future just and peaceful relationship between Palestinians and Israelis. The declaration affirms that justice, understood both as adherence to the message of the prophets and the life and teaching of Jesus, as well as the applicable international laws, is fundamental and, and a requisite principle which must guide a peaceful future for Israel and Palestine, Israelis and Palestinians. It rejects the future of imposed military power, illegal occupation and dispossession, or unilateral annexation of land, and the use of imperialistic theology as justification for military oppression of Palestine. It goes on to, it goes on and it is notable. We are talking so much about the death of, of children as part of this inhumane uh, bombing of Gaza. It went on to, to advocate for the rights of children living under occupation. Yes, this was an issue even before the siege began. It further went on offering to, to encourage all churches to support and encourage college students and faculty members as well as human rights groups. This includes Students for Justice in Palestine, Students United for Palestinian Rights, Jewish Voice for Peace, American Muslims for Palestine, and other allied groups whose freedom to speak, witness, and advocate on university campuses and in our society is, is threatened in any way by state or local governments or by college administrations and for advocating for the secession of, of U.S. military aid to Israel until such time that Palestinian human rights, civil rights, and self-determination are fully realized and protected in compliance with international law, U.S. laws on, mili on foreign military assistance, and the principles of human rights. We now stand with the Global Church Ministries who are calling for, I'll give you three steps, First, a call for an immediate ceasefire. Stop the carnage. Stop further militarization. Second, end immediately the siege of Gaza, of Gaza and provide immediate humanitarian assistance. And thirdly, call for a return of all prisoners. This includes hostages held by Hamas, but also Palestinians that are held captive in Israeli prisons. And I will add a footnote. What has not been said yet is there are currently more than a thousand Palestinians who are held without charge in Israeli prisons under a, under a law called administrative detention. They must be released. Yes. Yes. 
as people of faith and humanitarians, we understand that this crisis of humanity is the result of militarism and growing global militarization. And we call for all people of conscience and faith to work for a future that includes justice for all, including Palestinians. Thank you so much.